Greetings Trevians, Chaos here. I am pretty much over my cold now, I'm feeling much better, so thank you all for the well wishes. <laughs> These uh, blades of grass are making heart kind of cute. It's been a while since I've done a build tip tutorial, and today I'm going to be doing one on another bridge design. Uh, ever since I did the rope bridge, I've had quite a few people ask if I could do some stone bridges. So today I'm going to show you two different stone bridge designs. Not only in two different shapes, but two different material types, so that you can kind of mix and match them to whatever you would like. Uh, for this first one, it's going to look older, a little bit more rugged, and I'm going to start off with some rich mahogany. And the reason why I picked that is it blends with other materials really well, and when painted gray, it does look like a decent stone material. So if I just grab some stone brick and mudstone and just kind of blend them around the build, then we kind of get a roughened up texture as if this bridge has been sitting here for ages and has just started to crumble and wear. Now, not necessarily what you might want in a bridge, but it is a really nice ambient detail that just kind of adds a lot of layers to the build that you're doing. So once we're sufficiently happy with how roughened up the top looks like, we're going to go down below and we're going to add some gray brick into an arch beneath the bridge. And then we're going to shape it all into slopes. Now the reason why we have this as a physical texture here with actual blocks is so that we can get the nice slope shape. If you wanted more of a blocky um, bridge, you could just go ahead and use only walls for this design because you'll get that blocky edge and with the walls you can be placing blocks directly in front of the water without any concern of it actually taking up a water tile. Because if this bridge were to be a little bit lower or if the water level was to be higher, and let me just grab some water. Then you'll see that the bridge blocks the water. And if you wanted to kind of counteract that, what you'd need to do is grab some actuators, place them wherever you have the water touching the bridge, grab some white paint, Paint any of the blocks that have actuators on them. And then just push those blocks into the background so that it kind of matches more with the bridge. And then adjust the water level until it's just barely touching where the solid and actuated blocks are. And then you'll have a tile that's not physically blocking the water. So it looks like the bridge is actually inside of the water. And that's just something you have to work with if you've got some physical tiles. So back to the top, what I'm going to do is grab some gray paint and rich mahogany wall and just line the topmost segment. This gives a bit of a lip at the very top, which could be a nice handy uh, added layer of detail. It makes it look like there's kind of a short rail along the edges and just gives it a little bit more. Beneath that, I'm going to grab some uh, stone brick, or gray brick rather, and just fill in all of the gaps in between the archways and the side walls of the uh, land that we're creating a bridge over. Now you'll notice that it's quite a bit darker than it is in the uh, physical part of the bridge for the archway. And if you want it to look a little bit more like they're matching, all you need to do is paint the gray brick white. Now the only thing left to do is kind of roughen up the bridge. And we do that in the same way that we did at the very top of the build. We grab some gray paint uh, for the physical blocks and some stone and some mudstone brick and we just randomly place uh, some stone and mudstone in places where there was gray brick. So 
we end up getting a more kind of deteriorating feel to the entire bridge as we do this. And then once we've done that with the solid tiles, we go through and we do the same thing with the background walls using white paint. And that is the first bridge design done. So we have a nice arch bridge. And in this case, we used a bunch of different stone textures to kind of make it look roughened up and older. If you wanted to add even a little bit more detail to it, you could just grab your hammer and knock out segments of the uh, background rich mahogany, just to kind of make it look like some of it has crumbled off or broken away. You could even do something like uh, grab some white paint with some hellstone brick wall and just throw a little bit of that in there and it looks like it's been actually we're gonna go gray paint it looks like it's gonna be crumbling a little bit more than just having the straight edge of the rich mahogany at the top but that's pretty much all that it takes for this first bridge design so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the second one this next stone bridge design is gonna be something where it's more of a flat bridge leading across the distance and it's gonna have pillars holding it up rather than an archway. And I'm also gonna make this look a lot cleaner in terms of materials. It's gonna look like it's a newer bridge or it's uh, better maintained. So I'm starting off with some gray paint and some ebonstone brick. You could also use sandstone brick, but it's gonna be a bit lighter in shade. Uh, and then beneath that, I'm gonna place some stone slab. So this is gonna be the area that we're gonna be walking across. Behind that, just like with the other bridge, I'm gonna place a row of some uh, rich mahogany wall. And I might actually paint this one white this time, just to make it look a little bit different to show you what that might look like if that's what you wanna try out. Now beneath that, we need to think about where we're gonna be placing our pillars. So I'm gonna grab some uh, sandstone slab painted gray and the reason why I'm picking sandstone slab is you'll see if I place it oops that's white you'll see if I place it beneath the stone slab they don't blend together we get a nice hard line in between the two which is exactly what I'm personally after uh, you could try and do this with another stone material or even stone slab but in my opinion when they blend it just doesn't look quite as nice there's not the nice uh, bit of detail in between that we're after so I'm going to start off on one end with that gray paint and sandstone slab and I'm just going to place three blocks here and then let's go ahead and head underneath and then I'm going to bring this down like this to a three here and then repeat the same thing with one gap space in between. So that we kind of have this Y shape. And once we have that Y shape, all I'm going to do is hammer this to a slope, hammer this to a half, and then bring these into a slope at the bottom. So that we have kind of a straight edge here and then kind of sloping downwards with a step downwards up here. In between that, you could place some. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using some ebonstone brick painted gray just because it matches the top decor. But you can place whatever kind of block that you want up there. And I'm going to slope this upwards. Now this one is completely optional. I'm just doing this for a bit of extra detail. You could leave this step out if you'd like to. On the caps right here, I'm going to place some uh, brass shelf that's been painted gray. Now these two look a little bit weird for now, but it's going to make sense in just a little bit. With some gray paint and some fence, I'm going to fill in the gap between this uh, shelf and the uh, sandstone slab and just bring it all the way down. The advantage of using this bridge design is that we use a lot of fences and walls in its construction. We don't need to worry about actuating blocks like we did with the previous design. We can go straight into the water without having to recolor or actuate anything. But once we have those 
down, we need to grab uh, any kind of stone brick wall that you want. You can use Evan stone brick, uh, which is what I'm going to use in this case, or you could use something like blue dungeon tile or something like that. Um, we're just going to line the inside of the rich mahogany fence with this brick which kind of brings the fence up a little bit more and creates this nice even texture on both sides. Now down the gap in the middle you could fill it with something like a palladium column wall which looks pretty good or which I've been doing a lot more recently you can grab some uh, lead fence and just fill that in between. It lets a lot more light in and it's quite a bit of a different texture which looks pretty good in my opinion. Then with some white paint up top you can grab some hellstone brick and place that in there. And if you wanted to see it a little bit better you could just knock out those two uh, or these three tiles right here and you could see the hellstone brick even more. If you wanted even more of a visual than that, you could bring that down. Or we could even switch this to the lead fence and just let more light into here by doing a fence appearance. It's really up to you what you want to do with this. It's a very versatile design where you can kind of just customize it to whatever your whim is at the time. Once we have that done, we're going to line the bottom side of the bridge with some more white painted rich mahogany just to match the top. This gives a bit of a lip on the bottom side which again adds more depth to the entire build. And then a couple of tiles away, exactly two tiles, let me make sure that I'm measuring it out right, from the shelf we're gonna place a rich mahogany or white like this and then we're just going to grab some more of our brick and place it right in the middle I'm gonna paint it that gray and then beneath that brick with some gray paint we're just gonna place a couple of brass shelves like that and then once that's done we're just going to repeat this pattern over here And then basically you would tailor this to match the size of the distance between uh, one edge and the other. At this point I might even extend this wall out and add a third pillar. Or I might reduce the size of this wall to leave it to two and just kind of cut this bit off. But this is basically an infinitely repeatable bridge pattern. You can make these as long as you want, you can make them as tall as you want. If you make them taller, I do recommend adding some cross beams further down on the pillars just to make it look like it's a little better supported and a little bit more realistic. But other than that, that's the second bridge design done. So we're mostly looking at just repeating this pillar pattern with this detail in the middle and just do that over and over again. Again, you can replace any of these walls with whatever you'd like and replace these fences with walls and just kind of customize it to whatever you want. The primary design of this is the pillars with the kind of stone shape to give it this nice angular point. And that's going to do it for today's build tip tutorial. Thank you all very much for watching and thank you all for your patience over the last week while I've been dealing with my cold. I really do appreciate it. If you like the video be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really does help this channel grow. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.